All right, guys, uh, my name is Blake. I'm a senior here at Bentley. Uh, this, I've spent three semesters here at the Sandbox. Uh, this year, I had the priv privilege to work with Libby and the folks at Wal Walters Kluwer um, to work on a project uh, that I titled the Atlassian Automated Disaster Recovery Solution. So a quick uh, agenda of what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, first, I'm going to give a quick overview of what my solution does. Then I'm going to go through the three phases of the solution. And then next, I'm finally, I'm going to talk about the implementation of that solution. So starting out with a quick overview, uh, I made this slide uh, last semester, but basically what I'm dealing with is JIRA. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, it's a workflow management software that uh, a lot of people or a lot of companies use. It's an Atlass Atlassian product. Um, and the issue is, so uh, Walters Kluwer has, uh, uses uh, JIRA and Atlassian, and they uh, house all the data uh, in-house on two server locations, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. At any given moment, they uh, are using the East Coast, but if something goes wrong, they want to be able to switch over to the West Coast. And uh, my, my project was to automate that process. Uh, I made this little diagram to kind of explain the workflow of my, my project. Um, I'll kind of deconstruct this as, uh, uh, um, when we go, uh, as long from we go along. Um, so yeah. So within the product, there's five text files. There's a Docker file that creates the Docker image. There's a requirements that's uh, .txt file that lists all the Python requirements. Uh, script output, this is just an output of all the uh, activities the script makes uh, throughout the process. And then a .env file, which um, stores uh, nonsensitive credentials such as usernames and web addresses. So next I made four Python files with app.main, or app.py being my main entry point. Uh, this kind of facilitate, fit, facilitates the running of the three other files. Uh, the three other files coincide with the different phases of my sync proje uh, process. So I got shutdown sync.py, which shuts down and syncs the first uh, host, shuts down the JIRA instance, sorry. And uh, the second phase would be startup.py. This starts up the JIRA instance on the second VM or uh, server. And then the third phase is JIRA.py, which runs some online uh, re-indexing tasks um, throughout the process, uh, the end of the process. So going into phase one, which is the shutdown sync phase, um, to make it a little clear in my diagram, it's that little stack. Um, for this phase, we, uh, I used a um, Python library called Paramico. This is kind of a library that enables the establishment of SSH connections. So this connects directly with one of the VMs and uh, uh, have it running a shell script. So a shell script is just a uh, sequence of commands, uh, which just um, are used to automate repetitive tasks and uh, manage operations within a server. So for this process, three files are required. We got a DR sync, which is the shell script I was talking about before. Uh, this is kind of the navigates and <coughs> takes over the um, sync, the uh, shutdown process uh, once uh, from the Python. Uh, so that DR sync actually interacts and runs the next two files, shutdown.sh and rsync.sh. And then both those are uh, pretty self-explanatory to either shut down or run the rsync process. So next phase is phase three. Back to this diagram. Sorry, phase two. Uh, back to this diagram, phase two. Uh, and so this actually only needs one, one file, and that is the startup.sh file, and this is an existing file. Uh, that starts up the JIRA instance uh, on VM number two. So phase three of the uh, of the project was the reindex pro process. Back to this diagram, that little stack. This was by far the hardest part of the process for me. It was very uh, uh, difficult to kind of debug and uh, fix any issues I had. Um, so this was accomplished with Python Selenium. So Python Selenium is a software that allows you to uh, interact with web Web um, websites. Um, it's mostly used for um, like testing uh, websites, but I'm using it here to, you know, navigate, log in, and interact with different buttons on the Jira website. Um, here's a quick little demo to show exactly what this does, because I think it's it's pretty visual, and uh, it looks pretty cool. So uh, I initiate the process. It opens up Chrome. It's going to see enter email, password. It's going to read this two factor authentication. And then you'll see down here, it's going to say that in the, uh, the prompt. Uh, the, yeah, the prompt. So then you can use that two factor authentic authentication code to log in onto your phone and uh, automate this process. Um, 
One thing I'll mention that in the production version of this script, uh, it runs headless, meaning there's no actual visual interface, um, which makes it kind of, it, it seems kind of st stupid now, but in the actual production version, this, this left tab isn't actually showing up or happening. So again, the second uh, authentication happens, uh, you get time to re-authenticate. And you'll see that's the page I'm actually looking for is run that re-index feature right there. So next I'll talk about the implementation. Um, so I use Docker for this. Docker is a containerization platform. It basically just ensures that um, the script or anything running in it isn't uh, directly depending on any client. It downloads all the uh, uh, dependencies and uh, ensures that it's like a container. I think the, uh, the Docker logo is quite helpful. Just think of a Docker container as a shipping container. It can be put on a train, it can be put on a boat, it can put it, be put on a truck. It's very versatile. It's uh, perfect for, um, for this scenario. Um, why is it perfect for this scenario? So first day back of this semester, uh, I wanted to, or me and my coworker Prathish decided to start off where we left off last semester, and that was to run this script. Um, first challenge we ran into was Prestwich didn't have Python on his, um, on his computer, so he couldn't actually run the script. Next, I tried to run on my computer, and it was an immediate error because my Python inter or because my Chrome driver was out of date to my actual version of Chrome, because Chrome auto-updates, the Chrome driver does not. Um, so this is a, would, would have been a big problem because this is supposed to be a pretty um, reliable script. They kind of like set, forget, and rely on it. Um, so. After I saw this issue, I knew that something was kind of really wrong. Um, thankfully, Bentley CS240, Professor Matra has touched on Docker, and I knew that this was the exact purpose of Docker and be a great implementation of Docker. So at Docker runtime, you're just going to run these scripts. Um, um, so I did face some challenges, especially in this part. So if you guys notice, um, one of the steps you might have noticed in the, the video is I actually clicked this button here. Um, but one thing I was running into was sometimes I'd be getting these alerts that would cover this button. So when I try to click that button, it would say that button's not clickable because an element's on top of it, uh, which didn't make sense to me because I'd run it like 20 times in a row would work, and then all of a sudden the button wouldn't start, would stop working. Um, so it was me trying to, you know, chase that down the, the rabbit hole. Turns out these alerts were um, were causing the issue. Um, I'd run it 20 times. It would recognize there'd be too many clients associated with the Jira account, and it would throw up some errors. Um, and I didn't think of it at the time because I would just exit out of those and it magically start working. Um, just kind of something I over, over, oversaw. Um, so the solution to that was I kind of just forgot about that page entirely. I used the link that that button actually links to. Um, and the root cause was that, yeah, we, uh, we found out that it was because it was running like 20 times on Docker in the test. Um, it would, like in actual production, we wouldn't be running this script 20 times in a row. So they, um, there wouldn't be an error collecting, uh, saying there's too many clients. So yeah, I'd like to say a special thanks to the CIS Sandbox and Walter Kluwer, Professor Mark Friedenberg, Friedenberg for setting this up, organizing this. It was an uh, incredible experience. Special thanks to Libby, Fry Libby um, for uh, working with um, Mark and setting this up, uh, providing me a great opportunity, and special thanks to Pratush for giving me uh, great navigation, uh, being a great resource to you know, ensure that I'm set up for success. And uh, yeah, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, so at the start of this internship, I was kind of just given a step-by-step -step guide of like what this current solution is. Um, there wasn't in terms like in terms of use this or use that. There wasn't really much of that, um, which in like a school school project, you might they might tell you a little, give you a little more structure. Where this was kind of here's the here's the task, kind of find out a way to convert this to a Python automation. Um, yeah, it was, it was re really cool. It was um, you know kind of using technologies we've learned and known to work to your advantage. 
so I guess that aspect of it is similar to class, but um, yeah, it was kind of interesting to see all these technologies kind of um, work with each other and interact. <coughs> yeah, Thomas. So what part of the process took the longest time for you? Um, I'd say the the Docker implementation. Hello guys. Okay, it's working. So yeah, I was just wondering what part of the process took you the longest. You went through the whole process um, during your presentation. What like took you the longest from like ideation to implementation? Yeah, I'd say the so kind of the last phase, the implementation phase. Um, you know, creating the Docker file was quite quite hard. <laughs> Luckily, there was a lot of documentation and resources online, like Stack Overflow. Like this is a pretty common task. Um, so I was able to get a lot of that information online. Um, but yeah, it was just like kind of kind of, it was like the script would, would uh, it would be like small things would have to change for the implementation. It was like really finicky. You know, Docker doesn't give the best output errors and uh, it was kind of hard to, um, hard to, hard to debug that stuff, yeah. Thank you. Professor Montre, you kind of missed your little shout out. Oh. I, uh, <laughs> I heard you talking about Docker. Yeah. The problems with Docker, nothing. nothing, nothing like, <laughs> Could you pass it back? Uh, any other questions? Other questions from other students here for Blake about his experience. Not necessarily what he did, but the process of of of, of uh, being. Well, tell, tell us first of all how many hours a week you worked um, on this project and in the sandbox, and how the whole how the whole thing came came about. Yeah, so I have. Um like three and a half hours, four and a half hours a week on the sa in the sandbox, uh, Monday, Tuesdays. Um, I meet with Libby and uh, Pratush at least once a week uh, for like a half hour or so. And then depending on like how busy I am and uh, what, what my, t my schedule looks like, I usually spend like you know, four, four, five, six hours a week trying to uh, work on this. It also depends on like what, what part of the project I was on. If I was on like a particular project that was Challenging, I'd be spending more time a week on that, if that makes sense. Other questions? Yeah, Nick? Did uh, your program with uh, Oldman, was that like uh, no, not right now. But um, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Good question, though. What are, what are your plans for future work? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I did like this process. It was um, it was kind of cool to be able to you know uh, explore, research new technologies, try to implement them. Um, in terms of like whether I want to be like a software developer doing this full time, I don't know. At some points, it was being kind of uh, it was a little uh, frustrating because, as I said, I'd test it for 20 times and it magically stopped working, and that's like what it's a computer should be working every time, right? But um, yeah, I guess it's it's fun. You know, it's a lot of problem solving, and yeah. I also um and. I, uh, the last week or so, I've been working on documentation for all all of this. Uh, I actually found a lot, it was a lot of fun making that stuff, kind of uh, mapping everything out and uh, describing everything. So yeah. Yeah, Nick. Uh, it's not available on GitHub. Well, thanks. Cool. Thank you.